I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Thursday, May the 9th, 2013. Both Syria and Iran said they would respond to Israel's alleged airstrikes in Syria this past weekend that targeted Iranian weapons heading to Lebanon's Hezbollah terror group. According to a report from French news agency AFP, Syria's foreign minister Faisal Mikdad said that Damascus would respond, quote, immediately and harshly to any additional attack by Israel. The Jerusalem Post cited a report yesterday from Lebanese paper Al-Akbar that said Iran vowed to respond to Israel's alleged airstrikes with, quote, blows under the belt in several locations, citing a message from Iranian spiritual leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei promising full and unlimited support from Iran politically, militarily and economically to the Syrian leadership and people against Israel, the U.S., and any who dare attack Syria. The Lebanese paper also quoted Syrian President Bashar Assad saying that Syria will give everything to Hezbollah in return for its support for the Damascus regime. And Reuters reported that Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah addressed the alleged airstrikes in a televised speech today where he said if the aim of your attack was to prevent the strengthening of the resistance's capabilities, then Syria will give the resistance sophisticated weapons, the like of which it hasn't seen before. Nasrallah also said his forces would support any Syrian effort to recapture the Israeli Golan Heights. Earlier this week, Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Ya'alon said that Israel would continue to defend its, quote, red lines, a reference to keeping advanced weapons from falling into Hezbollah's hands. Several Jewish organizations reacted to the news yesterday that renowned physicist Stephen Hawking canceled his participation in Jerusalem's upcoming presidential conference as part of the academic boycott of Israel. As we reported to you yesterday after conflicting reports over Hawking's motivations, the letter Hawking wrote explaining his decision to Israeli President Shimon Peres stated that after receiving a number of emails from Palestinian academics, that he respect the boycott of Israel, Hawking decided to withdraw from the conference. The American Jewish Committee expressed shock and regret over Hawking's decision. In a statement released yesterday, AJC Executive Director David Harris asked Hawking if he was unaware of Israel's commitment to peace efforts, of the security threats facing Israel, and that Hawking was playing into the hands of those who seek to delegitimize Israel and its very right to exist saying, forgive me, but how can you be so easily duped? The Anti-Defamation League criticized Hawking as well, calling his decision a slap in the face for academic freedom. ADL National Director Abe Foxman said Dr. Hawking has bought into the anti-Israel boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign, which relies on an abhorrent and false comparison of Israeli democracy to apartheid. It is sad that a man of Dr. Hawking's immense intellect is unwilling to see the double standard and demonization, which are the hallmarks of this anti-Israel movement. When asked by the Jerusalem Post what he thought of Hawking's decision, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that Hawking knows that there are many false theories in science. There are also false theories in politics, Netanyahu said, and, that, and this, the slandering of Israel, is one of them, maybe the foremost among them further saying there is no state that yearns for peace more than Israel, nor any state that has done more for peace than Israel. Facebook is in talks to buy the Israeli navigation and traffic app Waze. Various reports say the acquisition price for the app could be anywhere from $500 million to $1 billion. Waze is one of the consistently top downloads at Apple's App Store and Google Play, it's a navigation and mapping app that, aside from directions, gives drivers updates on traffic, construction, police presence, and more, based on other drivers' input. Waze claims that because of this consistently updated input, its mapping system is more accurate than any commercial GPS system. If Facebook buys Waze, it would be its third acquisition in Israel. The social network bought mobile application platform Snap2 in 2011 for $70 million and face recognition firm Face.com in 2012 for $60 million. 
And finally today, efforts are underway to save the Canadian Jewish News, which is set to stop publication on June the 20th of this year. CJN President Donald Carr announced last month that Canada's flagship national Jewish newspaper would stop printing after more than 50 years as it couldn't continue with the weak advertising market and changing reader habits. Well, several efforts and efforts are now underway to rescue the paper. Two young professionals in Toronto, Alana Kafitz and Rachel Singer, spearheaded a grassroots effort to save the paper. They co-founded a website, SaveTheCJN.com, which has received a great deal of support from the area's Jewish community. And now the board of directors of the CJN launched an effort to save the paper as well. CJN President Donald Carr told his readers last week that the board appointed member Marty Goldberg, who is a well-known community activist and philanthropist in Toronto, will work with Stanley Plotnick, a past president of Federation CJA in Montreal and Jewish Federations of Canada, UIA, to see what can be done. The two are giving themselves till the end of the month to announce whether there will be a new version of the printed CJN or not. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Thursday, May the 9th, 2013. I'm Tisha Bader.